Like when you wake up in the morning, you have to understand the blood of Jesus is speaking better things over your life. You, you can't get tricked waking up trying to do better. You got to wake up and enjoy being His. You got to believe you're forgiven. You got to believe He's for you and not against you. You got to believe you're a son and you're accepted and your heart says you want that. See, faith is what qualifies you. He did the work. You believe it. And there's a reason. As a man thinketh what? As a man thinketh what? So he is. If the root's bad in a tree, then the fruit's bad. So you got to make a tree good so the fruit becomes good. You don't try to change the fruit of the tree. you got to make the tree good. God's so wise. And it's simple, but it's profound. So if he can change the way I see myself through him and in him, he'll change the fruit that's in my life. Do you get it? So if I wake up and I'm already accepted, if I wake up and I don't have nothing to prove, God just loves me because He made me for His image and Jesus paid a price to restore that relationship, I just have to wake up and believe that relationship. I have to wake up and receive His love, receive His forgiveness, receive His mercy. I've got to say thank you for loving me. Thank you for making me clean. Oh, if Christians would just believe they're clean, it would be amazing how it changes the way they live. People are waiting to be delivered. My Bible says you have been delivered from the power of darkness, translated in the kingdom of the Son of His love. If you just wake up in the morning in the midst of feelings, emotions, a little bit sleepy, body not ready to roll, and you head into the bathroom and you just say, Father, I so thank You, You have delivered me. You have set me in the place of Your presence and You live inside me and I am thankful. Holy Spirit, I welcome You. And you would actually talk to Him and commune with Him like you would with a family member. Shoo! Yeah? We just said hi earlier. We just chatted, right? So I barely know you. And I asked you if I met you when I was over there before, and you explained maybe just for a brief moment, etc. Right? I don't even remember your name. Would I get your name? Samuel. Samuel. I don't even know if I ask it. So now I know it. So if somebody says, do you know Samuel? I could say, I met him. Yeah, he seemed like a fine young man. We chatted for a while. I have very limited knowledge of Samuel because I haven't really been with Samuel. But I tell you what, buddy, if we just roll for the next week and we just hang out, we spend a day together, we wake up and I see you in the morning, we hang out again. A week from now, somebody says, you know, Samuel, I could affectionately with reality and conviction say, oh, I'm getting to know Samuel. Why? Because we've been together. You get it? People talk about Jesus like he's just a history figure. We aren't here to get knowledge about God. We're here to know him. And if you don't commune with him and develop relationship and spend time with him and receive the truth of who he says he is in your life and who he sees you to be, how is that ever going to become alive in you? If you don't walk through your house and just acknowledge his love for you, when are you ever going to believe he loves you? You're going to let circumstances define if he loves you. Now you got laid off and had a car wreck in the same week and you're asking Bishop that you thought God loves you. Why would he let these things happen if he loves me? And all of a sudden love is questioned when it should be rooted and grounded and founded in your life. Are you with me? Knowing him, there's nothing. There's nothing in your life. And I'm sorry I'm so passionate. It's just the way it is this morning. There's nothing in your life more important than knowing him. Not knowing about him. I'm not talking about a theology course. I'm not against a theology course. I, I'm talking about intimate relationship and fellowship with the Lord. If you don't spend time with someone, you'll never get to know them. If you don't talk and communicate, you'll never get to know them. If I hang out with Samuel, I get to know Samuel. If we just were buds and he just hung out with me and he traveled with me and a year from now we were still rolling together, who knows, I would know Samuel and Samuel would know me. We listen to Christian music. I'm not being mean. I'm just being sober. We listen to Christian music and we even do devotions and read our Bibles and sometimes never even make contact with Him in our heart and soul. We just think to play Christian and read Christian is Christian. But when are you reading your Bible and it says you're forgiven of everything and you've been made right in His sight, when are we just going, thank you? And you just even close the book if you have to. Lay it against your chest. Father, I just thank you that you love me that way. That you would forgive me of everything I've ever done and I would stand in your sight and not be guilty. 
Man, let that hit the mark. Keep changing my life. Make me everything you've paid for and desire me to be. God, there's people out there that all they see is the wrong I did. But your love is way different, and I'm not pressured by that. I'm privileged to be changed by you. And God, even time will tell. My life is brand new. And all of a sudden, you're not even pressured by the things you're trying to make up for. You don't need the person that's mad at you to not be mad anymore. You just need to become the person he paid for you to be and let time settle that. You with me? Some of us have burned bridges. Some of us people have cut us off. Some of us have given up on us. But his love's never failed. You got to put him on. Every one of you. I'm talking to you plain this morning.